What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to learn how you can connect your app to Snapchat to let the user log in. If you're excited, drop a like down below. If not for the video, definitely because this is the first video on this channel being recorded on a MacBook M1 Max. So that all said, I've got my physical device connected and mirrored here, and I've also taken the liberty of creating a brand new blank Xcode project. We're working with UI kits. You can just create this, and let's jump right into it. So the first thing we actually want to do is actually close this project, and the reason is, is because we want to go ahead and bring in the Snapchat SDK via CocoaPods. If you don't have CocoaPods installed, feel free to Google how to get that set up. We're going to CD into our project folder and run pod init to initialize CocoaPods. From there, we're going to run open pod file. And inside of here, we want to stick the pod for the snap SDK. Now, the Snap SDK offers more than just letting the user log in. You can actually do quite a few things that I'm going to be covering in upcoming videos. But for now, let's do the basics. So we're going to run pod install. Should be very quick, just like that. And we're going to go ahead and say open our project name.xc workspace. Once you do that, it should open up Xcode. Let's see. It looks like it can't find it for some reason. That's not good because I spelled open incorrectly. Let's try that one more time. There is our Xcode project. Let me expand this and give it a run on my device. Make sure everything is still good to go. I've got Snapchat here, of course, and our app on the right hand side of it. It's completely blank. Nothing there to see quite yet. Looks like it's successfully built and it has launched. So while that's doing its thing, let's go ahead and start building this. Now there isn't a lot of code that actually needs to go into setting this up. The first thing we'll want to go ahead and do is just bring in a connect with Snapchat or continue with Snapchat button. So we want to bring in the SC SDK login kit, SC for Snapchat, of course. And we'll create a login button up here. Let's see if I remember how to create one. We're going to say login button is a SC login button, super creatively named, of course. We'll go ahead and create it. And we want to create it with a completion handler. So this will create the button and then it'll give us either a success boolean back if we successfully signed in and optionally an error in case something has gone wrong. Now inside of this, we're going to go ahead and say guard success if we have successfully signed in and an error has not occurred, we know we're good to go. Now that we've got this login button here, we're going to say login button size to fit. And we also need to unwrap it because for some reason, Snapchat SDK returns this as an optional before we add it as a uh, as a view in our hierarchy. So we're going to say button is our login button. We're going to say view dot add sub view uh, button. And we also want to go ahead and center this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and say login button dot center is view dot center. So if you go ahead and give that a run, we should not see an error. And the reason we do is because this guy should be button here after we unwrapped it. And we need to let here since we're doing a unwrap of an optional. If you go ahead and give it a run, we should see a nice yellow login with Snapchat or continue with Snapchat button in our UI. Now, the reason we don't see it and our app crashed is because we need to do some setup work. Now, this setup work consists of also going to the Snapchat developer console. You can head on over to developers.snapchat.com and it's going to prompt you to create an account and create an app with the Snapchat uh, developer portal. Now, this is going to have things like your client ID. It's going to have things like what scopes do you want access to when you ask the user to log in. There's a lot of other information here that you can configure like privacy policy, et cetera, et cetera. There is a notion of submitting your app to Snapchat for reviewing. Uh, to get it approved. So there's going to be a section here where you can add things like screenshots and a description, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to want to take things from in here and add it to our info.plist. Now, for the sake of time, what I've gone ahead and done is I've copied this written out to my clipboard already. So what you can do is right click your info plist and say open as or show as rather source code. And I'm just going to paste it in down here and we'll talk through each of these pieces of information. There is not that many, uh, but let's talk through them. So the first thing you need to add in here is your scopes that you wish to get access for from the user when you try to log in. 
So the scope is that in, in this case is the user's display name. Now, one thing that's really important to note is when you go to your initial version and scroll down here, you're going to see the framework that you're using. In our case, it's the login kits. And you'll see that I've, ha I've got display name checked here. And you'll see that I've got the other two unchecked. It is extremely important to have the proper scopes checked here that match your info plist. Otherwise, the login does not work. Their documentation is not the best at describing this. So uh, it's taken me a little bit of a guess and check to make sure this works properly. The next thing that we've got in here is our client ID. Now the client ID, you can simply grab from your setup tab. You'll see you have a staging section and production. Staging is for development, production is for what it sounds like. You can simply copy your public OAuth client ID and stick it in here. The next thing is any random signature of your app uh, that Snapchat will use to basically open your app again after you have signed in and authenticated. So you can make it literally anything. I just made it um, this crazy app, colon slash slash, and then some suffix. Now you need to add this one here. This one will basically let your application open the following endpoints. So you can open up Snapchat, the Bitmoji SDK, and items app. This is also all documented on Snapchat side, which I'm gonna stick a link for in the description down below. And lastly, we wanna add a URL that another app can call to open the app that we're building. In this case, we're gonna stick with uh, this, this crazy app, which is what we have told Snapchat is the redirect URL up here as well. So once the authentication either succeeds or fails, we need to go ahead and uh, tell Snapchat to call this URL to open our app. Now, again, we've got documentation, you can read through all of this, but it's a little verbose and uh, it's not the clearest. So I'm also gonna link this GitHub doc that I found that someone generously wrote up that goes into details about some of the nuances. Now that we've got this set up, if we go ahead and give it a run, we should hopefully see that Snapchat button in the center of our screen. So connect to Snapchat, super cool. Now, one thing you'll notice when you click it is it won't work. And before I even actually do that is let's just fix it uh, preemptively. So we're going to go into our app delegate and we want to first and foremost import the SC login SDK, the login kits. I'm going to go ahead and trim these uh, comments for the sake of cleanliness in here. And we need to just add one function and it is application. Uh, open URL. Let's see which one we want in here. I believe we want the first one. We want to go ahead and return false by default. And we're going to say if uh, SC login kit, and we're going to call the same function more or less. So we're going to say application uh, can open URL. And if you can't find the exact signature, and at the moment I can't, so we can always go to the documentation and steal it from here. So let's see which one it is. It should be something along the lines of application. So this one right here. So it is application open URL. And we basically want to say uh, login client, if it can open the URL return true. So we're going to cheat and copy and paste just like that. And you should be good to go. Hopefully this was the right function. If we hit command B, we should still be building. I'm going to go ahead and hit command R to build and run. And let's see if we can actually hit this button and authenticate with Snapchat. So we're going to hit that button. We're going to open up Snapchat. I've just used a picture of myself as the app app icon up here. But of course, you would use your app's actual icon that you're signing into. And uh, you'll see a list here of the actual scopes that you're requesting. You'll see your Bitmoji at the bottom here above the button to continue. We can go ahead and hit that blue button and we'll hit it one more time in case I missed it there. And it'll go back to our app and we are signed in. Now, once you're signed in, you can actually, if you take a look at the docs here, you can actually get various pieces of information from the user by performing a query. So here is a data user query. I'm just going to copy and paste it for the sake of showing you guys, but I'm going to have actual uh, follow up videos for this to get into the weeds of it. But let's say you wanted to actually go ahead and query now that the user has signed in. What is that user's uh, first name or what is that user's Bitmoji URL? So if I just go ahead and copy and paste it, let me go, go ahead and just align it like that. For some reason, their documentation alignment is totally screwed up and it bothers me. So I fix all of them. But 
the idea here, and it looks like this is giving me an issue, the idea here is you create a query for user data, and you can have a uh, success handler and a failure handler. So the query is basically this query up here. What it's saying is, go ahead and get me the external ID of the user, and go ahead and you can also say, get me things like the user's first name, last name, et cetera, et cetera. We can actually combine this into one, one call like that. So I wanna go ahead and call this a query. We'll call this query like that. Now, if it succeeds, we're gonna get user data back and a nullable error. We'll want to unwrap this and if it fails, we'll get basically uh, a error back inside of here and we can disregard this Boolean. So in the failure case, we'll go ahead and see an error. And in this case, we'll of course want to unwrap the user data just like that before we can start reading things off of it. So we can get their name by saying data dot display name, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's also things like their Bitmoji URL, I believe is what they call it to get their avatar photo. So there's your Bitmoji avatar ID. There is also a URL, I believe, yep, Bitmoji to avatar URL, just like that, if you wanna download a picture for the user and show it here. And on this query, the important thing to just understand is you'll need to add things that you wanna fetch. So you can say with display name, with, with Bitmoji avatar URL, so let's say I want the display name for this user too, you'll just com continue to concatenate on here the things you wanna get access to. So this is actually a very common pattern in Android. It looks like Snapchat has gone with it on the iOS SDK as well, which is slightly cringy, but it's fine, it works. And that's basically how you integrate Snapchat login in your iOS app. Now this is yelling at me because this thing might be nil. And let's just go ahead and unwrap it like that. And these warnings up here are yelling at me because we're assigning these values into here, but never using them. So that's Snapchat integration in a nutshell. It's pretty simple. The one thing that you might end up wasting some time on like I did is just going through Snapchat's developer portal. I would say it's like a B plus at best of how it's built. It's definitely an initial version from them, so I anticipate it'll improve, but if you wanna build apps that'll show up in Snapchat or get some distribution or even use any of Snapchat's other products, they have a bunch of other frameworks, you can go about doing it at developers.snap.com. And before I wrap up the video here, just to take a quick, quick peek at this, peek at this, we've got login kit to login, of course. We've got things like sticker kits, which allows you to interact with stickers and you can add stickers. You can work with Bitmojis directly. You can also work with creative kits to uh, you know, go and actually share things to Snapchat and work with their different lenses. You can work with stories and embed those in your app and even the Snapchat camera, which is pretty cool actually because their camera is pretty, uh, pretty advanced and well built. So there you have it. That's all I've got for you guys today. I'm super excited to make more videos um, more frequently now that I'm on a newer machine. This computer absolutely blows through anything I put it through. So uh, drop a like, if not for the video, for the M1 Max that I'm working on here. Let me know in the comments down below if you're on an M1. I'm super impressed. And also if you have any questions, of course, with Snapchat integration. So thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.